So, okay, so I will talk about uh, tests of fundamental symmetries through the CMB from Dublin up to Planck. So the aim, the aim here is to uh, use, I mean, to show how to use the observed properties of the CMB pattern to constrain deviation from the standard model of particle physics. Since uh, CMB physics is purely electromagnetic, this means that uh, we are looking for violation in the photon sectors of, uh, of the particle physics model. So the, the question at the end is, are there any manifestation of uh, parity violation other than those that are observed in the weak interactions? So since, uh, uh, I mean, CMB observation uh, are uh, useful for such investigation for at least uh, two reasons. The first one, uh, CMB, CMB is, uh, of course, uh, able to probe electromagnetism in the very early universe uh, and uh, where the conditions are not uh, obviously identical to present. Moreover, CMB photons have traveled uh, almost the entire current horizon, so no other photons uh, have been able to uh, prob propagate that long uh, without interacting. So this uh, may provide uh, a, I mean, a unique probe uh, to test, uh, for example, in vacuum beer fringes, that is, uh, or other effects that may add up with time. So since we are uh, used uh, to, uh, okay, maybe, the, okay, I don't find the pointer. Uh, okay, here. We are used to expand uh, CMB and isotropies in spherical harmonics, so uh, we have to understand how the coefficients of the spherical harmonic expansion behaves uh, under uh, parity transformation. And after some algebra for the temperature and isotropies, we can find easily this uh, relation is satisfied. So more specifically, even multiples uh, are invariant under parity violation and uh, odd multiples acquire a minus one. So, but the CMB physics, uh, as already said, and as we know very well, does not distinguish in principle between even and odd multiples. So therefore, is it possible to divide each temperature map into subsets, subsets corresponding to even and odd multiples and uh, see uh, if uh, there is a kind of consistency with parity symmetry, for example, evaluating the power contained in these two subsets. Okay. Something similar can be done for, uh, for the uh, coefficients of the polarization of the spherical harmonics expansion. This is what we find. Okay. So first of all, uh, uh, since uh, uh, um, we can say immediately that uh, the angular power spectra for temperature, uh, for the cross correlation between temperature and the B mode uh, has to be zero if P is conserved, and uh, the same for the EB cross correlation. But this is not uh, the unique way we can test uh, parity symmetry. We can do it also considering the other spectra, as already said, uh, dividing in uh, between uh, uh, even and odd multiples. So, so in order to do that, uh, we have to define uh, different estimators that are given here. So we have the ratio estimator, for example, the ratio between uh, the power contained in the even and in the odd multiples, or the different, of, or the difference among these two. So, uh, this is what. Uh, Kim and Azelski have found in 2010. So the ratio, so this estimator, okay, is given here. And in the WMAP data, they found that there is a kind of odd preference, okay? This means that uh, there is much power contained in the odd multiples with respect to the even multiples at low, at large angular scale, so at low L. Okay, so this uh, is something interesting, and we have repeated this, uh, repeated and extended to polarization of this analysis, uh, computing all these estimators, uh, considering an optimal angular power spectrum, and we have uh, make use of uh, a Monte Carlo simulation, 
So the analysis has, has been supported by realistic Monte Carlo simulation. And this is what we have found. So uh, the, first, uh, the first row is for the ratio estimator, the second for the difference estimator. The first column is considering the range from 2 to 22, and the second column from 2 to 33. This is for the TT spectrum and considering WMAP7 data. So the histograms represent what uh, we expect to see considering a, a standard a lambda CDM model, okay, with uh, WMAP noise, okay. And the vertical lines represent uh, the observation of WMAP7 data, okay. So considering this kind of uh, uh, histograms, we can uh, measure the compatibility between the model and the observation. Okay, and this measure is given in the following plot, where here we have the percentage of, uh, uh, let's say, anomaly of, okay, of getting the, the value we observe with respect to the lambda CDM model versus the multiple moment. So the solid, the solid line is for the ratio estimator and the dashed line is for the difference estimator. So, so you can see that uh, there is a kind, of, uh, a kind of characteristic scale lying in the L range between 15 and uh, 24, it's written here, that might be considered anomalous. Okay, for in particular for L equal 22, we have uh, a, a level of 99.5% of confidence level. So I have not shown here all the other spectra because they turn out to be well consistent with the model. So, as a first uh, uh, consideration of this part, uh, we can say that there is a kind of anomaly detected at a large angular scale in the TT spectrum, okay, of WMAP7 data at this uh, confidence level. So it, it's a kind of a matter of taste if this such a percentage uh, has to be considered anomalous or not, okay? Moreover, it is still unknown if uh, such a result comes from fundamental physics uh, or uh, if it is due to some not perfectly removed foreground contamination or, or other systematic effects. Polarization data, uh, I mean, the polarization analysis of uh, the WMAP7 data does not show any deviation from this kind of analysis for parity symmetry, but this might be due to the large noise level of uh, that set of data. So that's why the Planck data are awaited with great interest in this respect, because first of all, uh, okay, thanks. First of all, uh, Planck is observing the sky with a totally different scanning strategy with respect to WMAP. Uh, and so this represents a benefit from the point of view of the systematic effects analysis. And, and of course, Planck will, uh, I mean, is, is capable to confirm or discard this, anom uh, this TT anomaly or understand to polarization. These uh, are the expected for, uh, forecast for Planck, considering just one channel, 143. In terms, I mean, the, 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 this is the improvement in terms of the standard deviation of the D estimator. So comparing this column with this column, you can see that Planck will, is expected to be much more sensitive to polarization estimators, but uh, I'd like to warn you about the fact that these forecasts have been obtained uh, uh, just considering the nominal sensitivity and uh, systematic effects are not taken into account and uh, so they, this, they might uh, impact uh, this, uh, uh, this uh, forecast. So I go, uh, I mean, I consider now another observable that in the NCMB analysis uh, is already considered as a standard tracer for, of parity violating terms, that is the invaco refringence, so the rotation of the polarization plane of a photon due to non-standard modification of Maxwell Lagrangian. Since uh, CMB polarizations uh, arises at two distinct uh, cosmological times, uh, 
it is uh, already customary to divide such analysis in two different ranges of L, low and high L, corresponding to two different uh, uh, cosmological times, uh, the, the uh, reionization era uh, at low L and the recombination epoch at uh, high L. So this is, uh, so if uh, the birefringence, uh, if such effect of birefringence exists, uh, the angular power spectra of CMBN isotopies get modified as given by this expression, where uh, on the left hand side of this set of equations, the OBS means that they are the, OBS, the, the spectra that are observed by the experiment. In the uh, right hand side, this represents the so called primordial spectra that are uh, uh, the one that we, obs we observe if uh, the birefringence angle is equal to zero. Okay, so considering this set of equation, we can build an estimator for, for the birefringence angle. So this, uh, these two estimators turn out to be very useful from a statistical point of view. But since I don't have time, I will skip the details of this and I go to the result. So this is uh, what uh, uh, Vu et al. obtained in 2009, uh, considering uh, the quad data and the small angular scale. So you can uh, see, uh, looking at these uh, panels, that they are well, I mean, the results are well consistent with zero. It is also in interesting to see the, this uh, panel where uh, the birefringence angle is plotted versus the multiple moment. Uh, so you see, again, that there is, a, on average, a well consistent uh, with zero. So we have, uh, um, we have considered the same kind of estimator at, uh, at a large angular scale, and, but considering the WMOP7 data. And this is the likelihood for uh, the angle alpha that we get. So this is the constraint for the birefringence angle that we obtain from uh, this kind of analysis that is uh, um, very well consistent with the uh, WMAP result uh, that uh, uses uh, a totally different uh, estimator, okay? So, um, in uh, considering this, uh, this, uh, this D estimators, it is also possible to build a spectrum of the birefringence uh, angle with respect to the multiple moments, okay, L. And of course, this uh, uh, provides a scale dependent information on, on the angle. And uh, as you can see, it is on average still compatible with zero. So this is uh, the forecast for uh, Planck data at low L. So this is uh, the likelihood for alpha. Okay, so the red, uh, the red curve is the likelihood of obtained with uh, the WMAP7 year data, okay, and considering, uh, uh, considering still the, D, the aforementioned D estimators. And this is uh, the likelihood that uh, uh, is expected for Planck, okay. Uh, this likelihood is computed as if Planck would have observed the same data set as WMAP, WMAP but with its own noise amplitude, okay? Again, as before, the warning is that this kind of forecast have been obtained considering just the nominal sensitivity, okay? So systematics are neglected here and, of course, they may impact. So I, this is uh, the, my conclusion. So as you know, parity and the CPT symmetries in general can be tested with CMB, okay? Now CMB observations are already sensitive enough to provide competitive constraints. So stay tuned for Planck. Let's hope to have some new results in, at the beginning of the next year, <laughs> okay?
that is working. So there's a big difference between um, TB, for example, or EB uh, modes, and, and what you showed about CLs for TT, which violate parity? Uh, t you mean, uh, I mean TT, uh, I mean, the, the confidence level of the TT violation is in WMAP7 data is... Uh, yeah, but I mean, they, they, quite di what they mean, what they imply is quite different. Because, you know, in the case of TB, for example, you're just saying the physics is parity violating. Uh -huh. In the case of CLs for DT being parity violating, you're saying something which depends on our position of the universe. It's basically parity through my point in space, my observer point. So you're basically saying we are a privileged observer in the universe. It's a completely different thing, right? You're saying we are at the center of the world, mm -hmm. and the world is parity violating when uh, you make that statement. You, you mean for the TT spectrum yeah. with respect to the TB or EB? No, it so it's a different question, the kind of parity you're testing in the kind of the first part of your talk and the second part of your talk. Uh, yeah. It's really quite a different story. Yeah, I mean, yeah, okay. The, I mean, there are two different tracers of uh, m potentially parity violating terms, right? Two different uh, way of detecting uh, uh, the impact of uh, uh, terms uh, in the photon Lagrangians, let's say. But this is not Lagrangian. The point you I'm making is if you, you actually so. find that kind of violation of parity in TT, mm -hmm. what you're saying is we live in, a in an inhomogeneous universe. We are at the center of that inhomogeneous universe, and that universe violates parity. Mm -hmm. And you're not saying anything about the laws of physics, in fact. Okay, mm -hmm. I mean, uh, you, can, uh, you can think about other models that uh, explain, you are saying that we can uh, uh, think about other models that can explain this kind of anomaly without uh, uh, involving the parity. Well, can you actually find a model in which the universe is homogeneous, isotropic, uh -huh. but which has a Lagrangian which causes an effect like that? I'd be very interested to see that. I mean, uh, I don't know. I'm, I, I wouldn't exclude that uh, a priori. I mean, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Other comments, questions? If not, we should go on and thank you, Alessandro, again. Okay, thank you.